Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to look at special order or pricing special order. This topic is covered in managerial accounting as well as cost accounting. It's covered on the CMA exam, the CPA exam, as well the BEC section. Additional similar lectures as well as example, additional examples can be found on my website, farhatlectures.com, where I will also post the lectures for this, uh, the PowerPoint slides for this lecture. So what is a one-time special order? Well, it's not unusual for a manufacturer to be approached by a third party to ask them to produce something for them. Maybe similar to what we are currently producing, maybe a little bit different. It may require some special, uh, some additional features or may not. So should we accept the order? That's the question here. So it's a one-time special order. Is it, good, is it a good deal? Should, should the manufacturers accept that one special order? Well, the first thing we have to ask ourselves, do we have the capacity? The first thing is we ask ourselves, do we have to have the capacity? Otherwise, if we don't have the capacity, do we have idle production capacity? For example, that capacity could be machine hours, direct label hours where they're not being used. If the answer is yes, we will proceed and find out if it's a good deal and at what price we need to charge this customer. So those are the first thing we need to determine, accepting or rejecting when there is an idle production. Obviously, we need to have the idle production, okay? Also, the decision rule is this. Is this order is going to increase our operating income? So, it, when our operating income goes up, okay? And here we are talking from strictly quantity, quantifiable analysis. So, from a number, revenues minus additional revenues minus additional cost. Is this going to be a positive or negative? And the answer is, if the if it's positive, we accept. If it's negative, we reject. Now, bear in mind, bear in mind that we do have non-quantifiable factors. So we have to be careful for qualitative factor. What could be some qualitative factor? Well, non-quantitative or qualitative factor, whatever you want to call them, such as. What is my the effect on my existing market share? Remember, I'm going to be producing something similar to what I'm currently producing, whatever I'm producing. I'm going to be using shoes. I'm, I'm producing shoes, and the third party or the other party is asking me to also produce shoes. So, so they might be competing with me. So I have to be careful about how is that going to affect my market share. What is the effect on my employee morale? I'm overworking my employee. What's going to be the morale on that? Logistical consideration. Is this, uh, uh, do I have to ship the product, not ship the product, so on and so forth. The quality requirement, what, what are they asking me to produce? Because more or less my name will go on that product. So what if the quality is not good that they're asking? What's my reputation? So those are non-qualitative, quantitative, which are qualitative factor, which we don't really, you know, this is, it's case by case situation. Okay, but simply put, what's going to be important for us is relevant revenues and relevant cost. So to determine the profitability of this project, we have to determine what is our relevant revenue and relevant cost. Okay, so let's review what is relevant versus irrelevant. What's relevant revenue or rev relevant cost? It's a cost or revenue that differ between alternatives. So if we did take the if the if we did take this project, what is the difference in cost and what's the difference in revenue? That's relevant cost and relevant revenue. If it's going to make a difference to our cost, make a difference to our revenue, that item is relevant. Obviously, irrelevant is something that will be incurred regardless if we make the product or not. So if we accept the special order or not, irrelevant costs, they're going to be incurred. They're called also sunk costs. Basically, there's nothing we can do about them. They already exist. Now, we have to be careful. A lot of people think that all variable costs are relevant and the, and the most variable costs are relevant, not all. Okay, so not every time you see variable cost, you would say it's relevant. Variable cost means it's a cost that varies with your production. That's going to change with your production. Obviously, if you are producing more of something, you will incur that cost. Generally speaking, we're talking about direct material and direct labor and variable overhead. Usually those are relevant costs because if you need to produce something, you need to input material, labor and, and variable overhead. Therefore, it will, but not all. And we'll see an example. What, what do I mean? Not all. At the same time, most fixed costs are irrelevant. I didn't say all, I would say most. So as long as you are not told otherwise, as long as you are not told otherwise, then fixed cost is considered ir irrelevant because it's going to be incurred regardless whether we take this project or not. 
So the first thing to determine if we if we need to accept or reject an order is do we have the, the idle capacity. So let's take a look at an, at an example to illustrate this point. Let's assume we are manufacturing shoes, and this is the shoes that we are manufacturing. We're selling each shoe for $20. Our direct material is $6 per pair, per pair. Direct labor, $4 per pair. Variable overhead, $2 per pair. Variable selling cost, $1 per pair. And fixed cost is $3 per pair. Our total cost is $16. So this is what we have right now, okay? And we manufacture those those uh, shoes in 100 batches pair. So every time we set up the batch, we can produce 100 pairs. Each batch consume five hours to be manufactured. So every time we need to produce 100 pairs, which is a batch, we consume five hours of machine time. Uh, the plant has a capacity of 4,000 machine hours. Currently, the production consumes 80% of capacity. Simply put, we have 4,000 hours. We are consuming 80%. 80% 80 is 32. This means we have 20% that's idle production capacity or equivalent to 800 hours. So here's what happened. A discount store approached us and asked us to produce 10,000 pair of shoes. Well, the first thing we have to ask ourselves, do we have the capacity to produce the 10,000 10, pairs of shoes? Before we even accept, we have to ask ourselves, do we have the capacity? Let's see if we have the capacity. 10,000 pairs, 10, pairs, we can produce them in 100 pairs, batches. That's going to that's gonna keep us with 100 batches times 5 hours per batch. We need 500 hours. We have 800. So we have plenty of time to produce those shoes. So there is no opportunity cost here because we don't have to give up any of our production. So here's what that this counter want us to do. They request the shoes to bear its own private label because obviously they're selling it in their own stores. They want to put their name on it. To add the label, to add the label, it's going to cost us an additional half a dollar or 50 pennies per pair. And no variable price is incurred here. So notice here there's the variable selling. And here, we, in other words, we did not have to, our salespeople did not have to incur any effort for this order. So this order came to us, therefore we are not paying someone a dollar for every pair of shoes they sell. Therefore, variable cost here is irrelevant. Why? Because we are told it's irrelevant. That's what we're saying here. So the question is, should we accept this order or at least how much, what's the minimum? Because we're not told what's what they're offering us as a price. But the question is, what's the minimum? You might be asked, what's the minimum you would accept? For this order okay so let's see how do we determine what's the minimum well we have to figure out what costs are we going to be incurring do we have to incur direct material sure we have to incur six dollars of direct material do we have to incur direct labor of course we do we have to incur four dollar do we have to incur variable overhead cost sure we do two dollars so those are what's considered relevant relevant um what, what about variable selling no variable selling why because we are told this company approached us. Our salespeople did not make any effort. We're not going to pay them a dollar. Fixed cost. As long as we are not told anything about fixed cost, we assume the fixed cost is irrelevant. Therefore, that's that. But we have to be careful. For this order, we have to add 50 pennies. Why? Because, because, uh, because they need to add their own private uh, label, which is going to cost us 50 pennies. So if we add the or we add, we add our cost, our cost is $12.50. So simply put, simply put, what, what price we should charge? In theory, any price above $12.50 should be good for us, in theory. Now bear in mind, for example, if they're offering us maybe $12.55, we might say, you know, there's a reasonable test we have to go through, but simply put, anything above $12.50 is acceptable because our operating income should increase by whatever pennies times the units, okay? So let's look at another example that's a little bit more involved, okay? Uh, profitability of order and opportunity cost. Dawson Company produces and sells 80,000 boxes of specialty food each year. So they sell 80,000. Each box contains the same assortment of food. The company has computed the following annual cost, and this is what we have. Variable production cost 400,000. Fixed production cost 480. Variable selling 320. Fixed selling and administrative 200,000, total cost 1.4 million. The company charges $25 per box. A new distributor has offered to purchase 8,000 box at, at, at a price of $22 per box. We usually sell them for 25. We have a special order to, to sell them for 22. Dawson will incur an additional $1 packaging cost. So there's $1 
packaging co cost per box to complete this order. So it's going to cost us an additional dollar. Suppose Dawson has surplus capacity to produce the 8,000 boxes. What we are told here is, don't worry about the capacity. We have plenty of capacity. So the first thing we're going to illustrate, we have the capacity to produce those 8,000 boxes. What will be the effect on Dawson income if it accepts this order? Well, if we accept this order, simply put, we have to determine what is our incremental profit or our additional contribution margin. The best way to do so is to just, I would say, prepare an income statement. There's, but again, there's more than one way to do this. But let's go ahead and uh, look at an income statement, assuming we're going to be selling 8,000. Let's just go through here. We're going to sell 8,000 additional unit times $22. So let's go ahead and start with our sales. 8,000 times $22. Our sales is 176,000. Are we going to be incurring variable production cost? Of course, of course we are. So what is our variable production cost? Well, um, if we are incurring 400,000 and we are producing 80,000 unit, 400,000 divided by 80,000 unit, uh, our variable cost is $5 per unit. So it's 8,000 unit times $5 variable cost. That's going to give us our variable cost of $40,000. And obviously, that's going to be subtracted from the revenue. Um, variable selling, we are not told it's going to be eliminated. So we're going to have to keep variable selling. 320 divided by 80,000 unit. That should be $4 per unit. So variable selling is 8,000 unit times $4. And that's $32,000 in variable selling. It's going to be minus. And remember, we have a packaging cost. And that's easy because it's $1 per box. An additional dollar so that's eight thousand dollar now let's take a look what we have 176 of revenues minus 40,000 of production cost minus 32,000 of uh, variable selling minus eight thousand whoops eight thousand of packaging we have an additional contribution margin of 96,000. Should we accept the order? And the answer, of course, we should. Why not? It's going to increase our contribution margin by $96,000. Okay. Now let's look at B. B suppose that instead of having surplus capacity to produce 8,000 more boxes, Dawson has surplus capacity to produce only 3,000 boxes. What will be the effect on Dawson's income if it accepts the new order? So what we are saying here is we have capacity, but we only have the capacity to produce 3,000 units. What happens if we accept the 8,000 unit? Well, we, if, if we accept the 8,000 unit, we have to give up 5,000 units. We have to give up 5,000 units. Why? Because we have to give up 5,000 units. Because to produce, to, to fill out this, the special order, we can only fill out 3,000, therefore we have to give up 5,000 from our own unit. Should we, should we, should we go ahead? Okay. Well, we have to, to determine what is our opportunity cost. What if we gave up those 5,000 units? How much are we given up? Okay. So let's, again, let's work kind of an income statement uh, for gone, basically. Here's what's going to happen. Lost revenue. What happened if we accept this? We're going to have 5,000 units of lost revenue times $25, and that's 125,000 of lost revenue. Well, yes, we did lose revenue, but also we're going to be eliminating some variable cost. Well, as we determine, variable production cost is $5 per unit, so that's 5,000 times 5. We're going to save variable cost saved here, 25,000. Also, we're going to be, uh, there is a variable selling cost save remember it's four dollar computed here five thousand times four dollars that's going to be twenty thousand okay so now if we take revenue law revenue lost and we uh net it from the uh, from the uh, from the uh, cost saved we're gonna have revenue lost of eighty thousand revenue or contribution margin loss additional contribution margin lost of 80,000. 80, Should we accept? Well, let's 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 think about it. If we accept, we're gonna bring our contribution margin up by 96,000 as we 
as we as we as we computed here but we're gonna give up eighty thousand dollar so overall we are still up sixteen thousand dollar so based on quantitative factor we should accept this order of 16 uh, of uh, of of this unit because we did we will be positive in other words it will be a positive uh, 16,000 overall so this is basically an example of special order I will work maybe a few CPA questions or a few multiple choice questions just to consolidate this point if you have any questions any comments by all means email me but if you're studying for your CPA or your CMA exam make sure you are comfortable with this topic good luck